30 minutes or whatever the, the schedule is, and it'll come back around. That's what it's like when you have understanding my PD arrays. I don't have to have every single entry I showcase. I want to have the highest one that's afforded to me if I'm bearish. I want to have the lowest one that's afforded to me when I'm bullish. But I might not be there at the time when the chart does it. I might get an alert that tells me, hey, look, it's done something. And then by the time of me seeing that and then going to my charts, there may have been a, a, a very fast displacement. And I've missed the ideal lowest entry or highest entry. I'm not freaking out about that. I have 81 ways to get into a trade. And not all of them appear in every single price run. I just look for the ones that appear. And because I know what they look like, like deer tracks, and I've seen it with my dad taking me out in the woods. That's, that's proverbial if, I, if that ever happened, but I've used that analogy. Because I've recognized it, because I know what it looks like in the past, and I've traded it and executed on it. Out of those 81 specific PD arrays that may be uh, allowed for me to enter on, there may have only been three that actually formed in that price run. It doesn't mean the other 70 plus aren't good. It just means that the algorithm did not implement them. So I know what I'm looking for. I know what time my setups are going to form. That's the most important thing. I know what time. I can set my entire schedule around three or four or five, six, eight different types of uh, trades that I know I can do one trade, walk away from the charts, and come back five minutes before the next one was supposed to be there and not be there when it happens. Can you, can your mentor, can your school of thought, can the people that wrote the books that you're believing as a religion, can they tell you that? Can they demonstrate that? Can they do it consistently? I bet you they can't, and I bet you you can't. There's something different here, folks, and I'm trying to, without just taking you right to it, because we're gradually getting there nonetheless, but I'm trying to allow that moment of astonishment where you see it and it jumps off the chart. And you're like, oh, and for some of you, you're starting to see some of those things in the comment section. And I'm allowing you to keep that to yourself. The worst thing you can do is go blab it on social media because then you'll ruin it for everybody else. Let them have that same moment of astonishment because if they don't, it's OK, because when I wrap up the live streams going into the last week of October, because we're not live streaming in November and December, the holidays, that's my time. I'll do pre-recorded videos whenever I find a time to do it. But live streaming stops the last week of October. So by then, you'll know everything that I wanted to teach in the 2024 mentorship. So it's not like a, a long drawn out process. You'll have wonderful resources to tap into protocols, processes, procedures. And some of them we'll cover today. Okay, but I think most of you have realized that there's a little bit more than just simply classic support and resistance or what you thought was supply and demand. There's something else totally different. And the first and foremost factor is time. And none of those other applications or approaches to trading ever reference time. And that's why 99.999999% of every aspect of retail trading is flawed because they don't have any reference to time. It's funny because there's people out there that do mentorships. They, they talk like they're, they're special in trading. Um, they talk with my vernacular, my, my language, they use my words, but they claim they didn't learn from me and they still ignore the fact, even though they might say there's an algorithm, there's an algorithm. If there's an algorithm, it has to run on time. So right away, you just eliminated the frauds right there, okay, because they don't know what they're talking about. If anybody submits the idea that that market is driven by an algorithm, there's a lot of people that don't. There's a lot of students that are watching me on YouTube that are very respectful when they leave their comments and say, um, this was a wonderful teaching on price action. Even though I don't believe there's an algorithm controlling price, this was very illuminating. Well, yeah, I can appreciate that. And that's all I've asked for. I'm not trying to convince you. I just have fun doing it where I'm ribbing people. You know, twisting the knife proverbially just to let them know that I find it astonishing that you can't see it. Because if I can time my trades and tell you what time they're going to form and I can tell you what price they're going to be at, look at this week. Look what, I, look what I outlined just this week and what I executed on. Folks, that's perfect. Like, that's perfect. And it's the logic that's been explained to you. And 
It's using something from the previous day that nobody else would have referred to. First presentation, fair value gap. I've mentioned that in passing in uh, Twitter spaces last year. I, I took these little hints in these long discussions because it's just too good. But if you listen and you take notes and you think, why did he say that? That is a clue. That's a little bit of a, a, a little golden nugget just buried underneath the surface of that discussion. It doesn't take much digging for you to discover what it is. But if you just listen to me and you don't go on your charts and, and, and examine what could be seen around that thing you just mentioned. All of a sudden, when you start studying it and looking at how price behaves around it. And you hear that I'm always referring to the last three days, the last three days, the last three days. Because swing highs form with three candles. Inside of that element of time of the last three days, you're never going to miss that real sweet spot. If you're trying to trade swing trades, like if you don't want to be intraday trading, you want to trade, trade a little bit longer term perspective, you want to trade for the full weekly range, or you want to trade for the whole month's range, or you want to trade for several weeks that may be lasting several months, maybe six to a year, six months to a year. Long-term position trading. I don't personally have the appetite to do that. Like I, I can't sit still that long. Like I, I hyperactivity basically. Like I, I have to see. I, I know that I can take what I have and run it up with velocity, with multiple transactions instead of just taking one and holding onto it and submitting to whatever it wants to deliver on that one trade. There's nothing wrong with that. Like if you're running a 401k for yourself, the self-directed IRA. And it's advisable that you should be doing that because you get wonderful tax treatment and you can balloon the account up big. And some of that trading can be done with long-term position trading. The only problem with this is, and this is why I'm really glad I've been spoke, uh, speaking predominantly on intraday short-term trading, is because they're trying to implement these laws that are going to be unrealized tax, uh, taxing unrealized gains. So that means if you're holding stocks or, or positions that are not yet cashed out, how are they going to justify charging a tax on something that you haven't even made the, the profit on? It's an unrealized profit. That's corruption. That's the highest form of corruption. And if people don't stand up against that, then we have a real problem here because that is absolutely asinine. No one should ever agree to that, Republican or Democrat. Nobody should see that. But if you're day trading, if you're intraday trading, you're getting in, you're getting out. You had that profit. It's realized. You know, and if you have a good CPA that can help you do whatever you can get in terms of write-offs and reduce the legal thresholds of your personal taxation, you should do that. But if you're doing things like fund account trading, you have a different tax treatment. You can do things differently that someone like myself, if we're trading in live accounts, that profit is treated differently versus what you make through the prop funds because that that's not even real money that, i mean it's not real trading like that's you're getting rewarded for playing the lottery fantasy football that's basically what that is so that type, that type of income can be treated differently and it's wrapped in kind of like the same thing as a, a youtube earner any money that you make as a youtuber you know, clothing travel um cars um all the 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 glitz and glam that makes up what your image is, you can get a lot better tax treatment there than what you do with your trading profits in a real account. So don't laugh at these people that are doing this stuff online, okay? Because they've listened to me in the past where I said, if you want to get the best tax treatment and you have a personality, do this online. If you learn how, if you learn how to trade, all of you listening can learn how to do this well. And all of you have diverse personalities and not all of them are going to be Interesting, interesting. Like, like mine. I, I, I'm abrasive most times, and either you love me or you hate me, and that's exactly how I want it. I don't want in between. I want you either love me or you hate me, and either one I'm satisfied with. But you can be a middle of the road personality if you learn how to trade well, and put yourself together, uh, online presence, and live stream yourself executing. You're not trying to teach my stuff. You're simply just doing it, and people want to see it. There's so many students of mine that come to me wanting to get into private mentorship 
when I'm teaching for free here. And they'll say, can you at least turn me on to your students that are really good and let me follow them? Why would they want to do that? Because they want to copy their trades. So if you have a skill set in this, you have a blank check to make as much as you want to ever make. And because you're live streaming it, you ain't got to worry about anything being leaked. If you do a mentorship, it's getting leaked. If you do a signal services, they're going to get leaked. But when you do it out in public, you've made everything impossible. Why would anybody try to buy something that's already available for free? That's why I'm killing everybody right now. I'm literally murdering them. I'm burning the village. Okay. And I'm having fun doing it because you all had your fun with me. Now I'm showing you who's who. Don't waste that opportunity of income and that different tax treatment. If your skill set is afforded to you and your personality allows you to be out in front of the public and you take a trade and you trade and you call the market, I would watch you. As a student, I would love nothing more to be able to see something like that. I watched Tanya. I mean, she's, she's got her own little personality. And it works for her. People try to tell her what to do. And she does the right thing. Listen, uh, this is the way it goes here. And you don't like it. You ought to watch other people. Okay. And you got folks like Patrick Whelan. Awesome personality. He's like a heel in wrestling. Like he's the perfect bad guy. Okay. But he just sucks at trading. So if he can learn how to trade. And man, he would be a phenomenon on YouTube. Like freaking crazy. He'd have the best of the best. He'd like be the best, best Ric Flair in trading. You'd love to hate him. But you can't. You can't deny once he learns how to trade well and consistently not blow his accounts, he would be a, a huge draw for people to watch on YouTube. And I, that's the only thing I've ever been interested in. I want to see him get better at it. But uh, <laughs> a lot of you don't want to do those types of things. Maybe you, you don't have the skin to do it because if someone gives you something critical, it'll hurt your feelings. You won't want to do it or you'll clam up. And it's not for everybody. But the main thing is this. You're seeing a different level of understanding and price that is just still scratching the surface. Just, just scratching the surface. And every new revelation that I'm sharing is opening up a huge level of understanding about how everything else is working. Contrast that with you go into the day and you're waiting to react to something. As a retail trader, you're waiting for some kind of price moving away from a VWAP, um, or you're waiting for some kind of, I don't know, indicator to tell you it's, it's doing something, or some kind of pattern that is populated on your chart as an overlay that tells you there's supposedly some harmonic pattern there. And you're trusting that stuff. But you're admitting to yourself that, hey, look, Nothing's 100%. If I'm wrong, it's okay. It doesn't mean that I, I'm going to keep losing. It just means that I'm okay losing half the time. And to me, that makes no damn sense. But gamblers do well with that. Professional gamblers can do well in those types of situations because they know how to bet heavy when they feel like they got it in their favor. And they'll lose a lot of hands. And they'll find themselves at the final table at the World Series of Poker. Watch those, watch those uh, competitions and you'll see the same faces finding themselves to the latter stages of that competition more times than anybody else. And that was always a fascinating thing for me in the 90s. Like I watched that all the time and the same people would be at the tables, the last ones. That's not coincidence. They know how to play the cards and they know how to play the people at the table. And that's exactly what market making is. That's what it is. It's bluffing. It's enticing. Throwing down a hand that you know you probably could play, but throw it down. And what they thought you were playing with, oh, and you're confusing them. That's why if you go to a casino and you sit down at a blackjack table, they bring out a brand new shoe, okay? And you start, you start playing the table. When you got a good hand, throw it down. Lose money doing that. Throw it down, throw it down, throw it down. What you're actually doing is you're going to mess up the shoe. And in 15 minutes or 20 minutes, they're going to come out and change the shoe or ask you to go to another table. That table's closed. Don't believe me? Go fucking try it. 
Okay, because the eye in the sky above you, that's who you're trading, that's who you're playing cards against. It's not the dealer. That shoe is a stack. Okay? It's a stack. Meaning that there's a specific order of the number of cards in a row that's gonna be this rotation. Okay? They're not randomly shuffled, they're not stacked in there where anybody has a free chance to get the random uh, take of a card. But that's not how it works. Okay? It's not, it's not how it works. When someone's winning consistently, they will come out and they'll change the shoe. The shoe is that little box, in case you didn't understand what I meant by that. On the table, there's this big box of multiple decks of cards, and they're all stacked in there in a specific order. It's stacked in a way where anybody that understands the, the game of poker, it will lead them to, to take a specific card and say, okay, I'm going to try to play this, and I'll discard that. It, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. But it at least primes them to play the cards that they're given. But if you start making consistent wins at that table, they're going to come out and change the shoe. Not because they ran out of cards. They want to disrupt you because you have now counted the deck. You have that shoe understood. You know exactly what's coming out. That's why count, uh, card counters are not allowed to play in casinos. Let me tell you something. I don't care. I don't care. This is, this is my perspective. Lynn. You can have a different opinion. But if someone comes in, even with partners, and they're counting cards together, and they have electronic devices telling the other person at the table, hey, look, this is good, this is not good, how the fuck's that cheating? That's not cheating. They don't know what those cards are. They don't know what they are. They're just counting. They have a card counting system. 